Hello everybody, welcome to number 27. I am Jack and this is not a Fiat Cinquecento. How can that be? Let's look around it. I mean, that profile is just unmistakable. This has to be a Fiat 500, right? On top of which, let's have a look at the interior. Definitely Fiat 500 again. Cinquecento, look at that lovely round dial, the Bakelite wheel, the color painted dash doesn't have the suicide doors so obviously it's like a later model Cinquecento but still it definitely looks like a Cinquecento at first glance. So at the front here is where you first see something which is a little bit different. Now the car is still I'm sure you'll agree unbelievably cute. I mean these things you just want to grab it and hug it. Look I can. It's so small <laughs> but it doesn't have the normal little Fiat badge here. It has what I have to say is not really a big improvement. It's kind of given the Cinquecento a, a small sort of moustache of some kind. And then there is the badge there for Steer Puch, which is an Austrian company. Now this one has obviously been repainted, so I don't know if perhaps they were chrome originally, which would probably have looked a little bit better, but all the same, that kind of tells you that there's something which is not quite normal Fiat 500. Come on, what's going on then? What's up? Hello? Wow. Hello, buddy. What's up? You're very loud. What's going on with you? Are you going to let me film? Quite a pretty cat. I don't think he's a normal cat either. Looks like some sort of leopard thing. Anyway, I'd better get back to the car. So, do you like it? I think you do, don't you? Anyway, that's the first sign that something isn't quite right. But everything else... <laughs> okay, I can't help you right now. So everything else is pretty much sort of Fiat 500 still, the wheels, the lot of it. But let's go to the back. Come on, dude. Have a quick look at him. You're a talkative little chap. Huh? Hello? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him on my mic, but he's pretty loud. Okay. Now here at the back also is another sign. That engine cover, that definitely isn't right. And obviously it says Stierpuch 500S. But this is where it gets really interesting. Let's have a look in here. Now this is definitely not a normal Fiat 500 parallel twin. It is something quite different. It's still a twin, but it is in fact an opposed twin instead of the Fiat parallel twin. Now it is said that originally when Fiat designed the, fi the 500, they considered using an opposed twin as well because obviously they're inherently much better balanced than a parallel twin. However, it was decided that it would have been much more expensive to produce. They're sort of more complicated engines, these. So in the end, Fiat didn't go ahead with that. Stierpuch had their own engine. I don't know if this was designed for this car or if it already they had an existing engine in place, but they used it for this car. Now, the reason why this exists in the first place is that before the war, um, Puch did produce cars, but after the war, it was thought that it was gonna to be too difficult for them to start with an all new design. So they thought, let's try and adapt something out there, give it our imprint. And they went to Fiat and Fiat under license allowed them to distribute these cars. Now in terms of history, it's quite interesting because originally Fiat only gave Puch the actual body in white. Puch used their own engine, their own transmission, their own running gear, so the brakes, everything was, was Puch. And they produced 17 horsepower, which was a useful four horsepower more than the standard Fiat 500 of the time. The first Fiat 500 with the suicide doors, so I think that's the 500D. Fiat then updated the 500 and introduced the 499 engine, I think, which produced 17 horsepower, at which point the next evolution of the Puch was the 500S that you see here, which has 20 horsepower. But interestingly, the only real difference between this, unlike the earlier cars, and the Fiat 500 of the time was in the engine. I think it was decided by Puch that it was too expensive for them to use their own gearbox and their own running gear. 
So for these cars, the only real big change that they did was to put this engine in. However, as we will see when I take it out, it does make a substantial difference to how this car drives. Also worthy of note is that as well as these models, the 500 models, the standards and the later S's like this one, Pucher also had the 700s, which were the Estates. They came with a bigger engine, I think it was a 650, and that produced 20 horsepower. But they also produced the 650T and the 650TR. The 650T had 27 horsepower, but the TR, R was for rally, and I think it was also used as a police car, believe it or not, yeah, in Austria. But anyway, the TR had 41 horsepower, which is actually really, really good because the, the Abarth, the, the 595 Abarth of the time, the Fiat, that only produced 36 horsepower. So it was a good four or five horsepower more, um, which in a car weighing so little actually does make a, a big difference. So. The Austrian models, it sounds like, or they have their reputation, they were actually slightly better than the Italian ones. But let's take them for a drive and see if that's actually true or not. So inside, it's a very familiar experience because the interior is pretty much standard Fiat 500. You've got that lovely painted dash. You've got the, from the earlier versions, the lovely sort of instruments, seating position, everything is exactly the same. So they are actually, interestingly, more roomy than you would think, these 500s, from the size. The only area where I struggle a little bit is with my elbow room to the left there, which is something that I found when I bought my own 500 in Italy and drove it back here about four or five years ago now, I think it was, that it was much better to drive long distance than you would think. The most noticeable thing, though, straight away in difference with this is just how much smoother that engine is. It really is just, it's on a different level to the sort of Fiat Parallel Twin. Now, make no mistake, it is still an extremely slow car, this 500S, but it definitely has a little bit more go than a standard 500 would. So as standard, these later perks came with the Fiat gearbox, not their own gearbox, and it is a crash box. Come on, what are you doing? Stop in the middle of the road. Anyway, <laughs> they came with a standard gearbox, which would be a crash gearbox. This has apparently been upgraded to a to a later Fiat 126 box, so with Synchro. However, I think maybe the Synchros on this one are a little bit worn because it's still not that happy changing gear unless you double D clutch uh, or try and rev match. So it really is so much smoother than the 500 unit and it does have a little bit more go. Still not amazing, but yeah, it is a little bit faster. And these 500s are just such amazing fun, whether it's the originals or, or this one. I mean, I would say that this is a, a useful improvement on the first Fiat 500, and they were, I think, quite a bit more expensive, but they sold reasonably well. I think overall, at the time, they did about sort of 60, 70,000 units, which doesn't sound much by today's standards, but for a little sort of reissue, it was pretty good. Now, the other interesting thing is that when Fiat allowed Puch to do this, they put some quite strict covenants on it so that they couldn't, they couldn't just sell these anywhere. I think they were limited to the Austrian market, although a few did find their way to Germany and a few other places. But generally speaking, I think that Fiat did know that it was a superior product and they were quite keen for it not to be too successful. I would absolutely love to try one of the 650s um, with a, you know, maybe the livelier one of the two would be brilliant. But you know what, another thing about these is just how well they handle. I think it's because they're so short and so small, but 
they are really rather lovely to sort of take and, and just chuck into the bend. So if we chuck it through there, it's grippier than you'd think and it sort of pivots around really well as well. Very rare cars these as well. Only 14 were produced in right-hand drive for the UK market. Uh, this one has obviously been imported from uh, somewhere in Europe. So I guess in a way it's a real shame that Fiat never made the original 500 with an opposed twin like they had planned to um, because it does make it a much better car. Having said that, I guess the whole point of the 500 was that it was going to be accessible, it was going to be super cheap um, so that it was going to get Italy mobile and it was going to move Italy from scooters onto cars. So in that way, maybe the parallel twin was obviously simpler and cheaper and I guess it probably made sense. It's been a real privilege to drive this thing today. It's just awesome. It really is just so cool. Uh, and it is, it has to be said, it is a little bit better than its Fiat cousin. So thanks to all of you for watching. Thank you to my friend Anton, uh, whose place we're just pulling into now, not normal racing, who has done some work to this car and other cars, has that lovely Montreal in at the moment. Right, so we've resolved a little mystery. This is Anton. So Anton, <laughs> it's a lovely Synchro 126 gearbox in there, isn't it? As no, you told me. No, it's a Fiat 500. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's why the Synchros were buggered, because it doesn't have Synchros, it does still have. I think he was getting confused, because the chap who owns this also owns uh, a 650, uh, which does have the different gearbox yes. in it, but this one is standard. I really look forward to seeing you for the next one. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because that really helps. Uh, and see you soon.